In what could easily pass for medicine after a political death, the embattled national chairman of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Dr. Yocha Ayu, yesterday was compelled by the party's National Working Committee, NWC, to step aside in deference to a restraining order by the Benway High Court on Monday. To this end, the deputy national chairman of the party, Ambassador Ilya Damagum, has taken over an acting capacity pending the outcome of the case of the anti-party suit against Ayu. This notwithstanding, I use keysmen from Igorayev Ward and Boko local government area of Benway State at press conference where they exonerated Ayu of any wrongdoing, insisted that those that signed the suspension letter against Ayu had their signature forged and subsequently kidnapped. Rice correspondent Amaka Ode Walker tells us more. After a careful consideration of the court order and in line with section 45, subsection 2, of the Constitution of the PDP as amended in 2017, the NWC resolved that the Deputy National Chairman North, His Excellency Ambassador Omar Ilya Damagum, assumes the National Chairmanship of our party in acting capacity. Embattled Chairman of the People's Democratic Party, Dr. Iyoche Ayu, who has been in the eye of the storm for months following calls for his resignation by some leaders of the party, finally steps aside. Led by the Governor of River State, Yes Mwike, the G5 or Integrity Group had first demanded that Ayu steps aside as party chairman in May last year due to the emergence of Atiku Abubakar, a northern candidate as the presidential flag bearer of the party. Iyocha Ayu from Benue State in north central Nigeria was urged to go as both key positions of presidential candidate and national chairman could not be held by the north. Ayu had insisted that change in the leadership of the party could be detrimental to its outing during the general election at hand. With the PDP not only losing the presidential election, it also lost some PDP states, including Benue, where the embattled chairman hails from, making the calls for Ayu's ouster to even get louder. On Sunday, a section of the PDP ward executive in Igorev ward of Boko local government area of Benue state suspended Ayu, accusing him of working against the success of the party in the state. We observe with utmost dismay that Dr. Euchi Ayu, who is the national chairman of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, work against the sources of the party in Igoro Council War. It is on record that he has also failed to pay his annual subscription. But in a statement by his media aide Simon Imobe Swam, Ayu had argued that his word executives lacked the powers to suspend him as only the National Executive Committee of the party, the second highest decision-making organ of the party, has the powers to suspend him. But with a purported suspension, Ayu joins a list of PDP leaders to be accused of anti-party activities after the general elections as only days before, former Senate President and Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Ayim Pius Ayim, former Governor of Ekiti State, Ayo Fayoshe, Senator Chimaru Ketan Namani, amongst others, had been suspended as well. But as if the suspension was not enough, it was later followed by a McCordy High Court interim order restraining Ayu from parading himself as the national chairman of the PDP. The court was presided over by Justice Wilfred Bochi. On Tuesday, some stakeholders of the party from Benue State arrived at the national headquarters of the party to pass a vote of confidence on the leadership of Ayu and disown the earlier suspension which led to the court ruling. Igoro PDP Ward Executive Committee hereby pass vote of full confidence on Senator Dr. Yochi Ayu and we also pledge our full support for his pragmatic leadership style. This will eventually not matter or have any effect as Ayu was replaced barely an hour after by the Deputy National Chairman North, Umar Ilya Damagum. The National Publicity Secretary of the party announced that Damagum will assume office as the acting national chairman of the party pending the determination of the case in court or setting aside of the interim injunction. The National Working Committee charges all leaders, critical stakeholders, 
teaming members and supporters of our great party to remain calm and united at this critical time. On his part, the acting national chairman says a meeting of the National Working Committee will be convened to review the current situation. And when asked by Arise News about the gale of suspensions and a way forward, he promised to review what is on ground. As a party, we are prone to reconciliation. That thing you are asking of already is on my mind. We will review it. I've already spoken. Uh, we'll have a meeting, NWC meeting tomorrow, and in that meeting we'll discuss it, and there will be a possible review of whatever has happened. It is left to be seen if EHIU's stepping aside will be enough to calm frayed nerves within the party, as those who had been calling for IA's removal continue to insist that the chairman of the party must come from the South for equity and fairness. I'm Maka Ude Walker, Arise News. All right, good report there by Maka Ude Walker. Dr. Vati, finally, all of this is happening to the PDP. Well, what the Nigerian constitution says very clearly. Mm is that any order of court mm. must be respected. Even if the uh, order of court is uh, defective, the only recourse that you have available is to go back to the court to go and argue your case. So listening to uh, Debo Lugwaba, spokesperson of the People's Democratic Party, and also uh, deputy chairman of the party, now acting chairman, uh, Umar Damagumayu, uh, the point that is being made is that the party, as a law-respecting body, as a rule of law-compliant body, would obey the ruling from the uh, uh, Benue State High Court saying that the, an interim injunction has been granted, restraining uh, Senator Yechi Ayu from parading himself as chairman of the party. Uh, arising from an ex parte motion that was filed by an aide of the governor of Benue State, Samuel Autumn. And the court says, until the hearing of the motion on notice and the determination of that uh, motion or suit, you know, uh, then of course, Ayu should step aside, should, should not parade himself. The matter has now been adjourned till April 17. So in the interim, therefore, uh, Senator Yochi, are you saying he respects the rule of court and the party saying that the court must be obeyed as stepped aside. But it seems to me that what we're dealing with is a battle for the soul, or let's use a stronger word, a battle for the existence of the People's Democratic Party as a political party in Nigeria. Because we've seen situations in this country where political parties disappeared. Once upon a time, there was a party called Alliance for Democracy. Once, a once upon a time, there was a party called uh, Action Congress. Once upon a time, there was a party called APP, right? Yes. Which, in a way, even produced the incumbent president who is going to live on, uh, uh, on May 29. But those parties vanished. So the PDP, having been declared a loser in the 2023 election, in the 2019 election, and with some former leaders of the party not showing as much interest. I mean, they have the uh, president of Basenjo. I don't think he's showing much interest in that party. We have not seen President Jonathan coming to the front, uh, you know, in, in terms of the politics of the party. What we see is infighting, crisis within the party. So this is about the soul, the existence of the People's Democratic Party. But a larger challenge for the Nigerian people is that we could well end up very soon with a one-party state in Nigeria that is dominated by the All Progressives Congress. But if that happens, it will be the choice that the Nigerian people themselves will have made wittingly or unwittingly. Now, the other leg of this is that Senator Yochi Ayu says, okay, he will go to the court and challenge it. Yes, under the principle that thou must hear the other side, ex parte motions are often uh, abused, but the other party now can go to court 
I say under the principle of how the other pattern. Thou must hear the other side. Then, of course, Senator Yosha, you and his lawyers can go back to the same court and say, this is our side of the story. What will be interesting will be what the court now does subsequently with the uh, interim injunction that it has uh, given. Will it affirm that interim injunction? But, you know, the IU camp is making it clear that, look, the people who signed the uh, petition, uh, they are not the rightful persons that it was forged, that in fact they were, that it was an exercise in futility, but the proper place now with this development in the PDP to prove all of that is in the court of law. And then we await what the court will now decide when it hears the other side as it must, because most people complain about expert emotions. However, there's a twist in the tale. And that twist in the tale was provided by uh, Governor Yesum Wiki of uh, Rivers. He said that the main argument of Senator Yochi Ayu and his supporters in the Igrium uh, world, uh, who came out yesterday and said more or less the same objections that Senator Ayu addressed, he said, Senator uh, Ayu should be reminded that he took over because Prince Uche Secondos was rejected by his own word. And then he stood. And therefore, Wiki argues that the argument by Senator Ayu that the word can, is not in a position to reject a member of the National Working Committee cannot stand. So you then see that if you place this in context, this is a continuation of the battle within the PDP about who becomes president, who becomes chairman. At that time, it was said that, oh, if uh, the PDP wins, then the chairman will step down. Could this be a case of the G5 and the integri integrity group saying that, okay, PDP may have lost the election, but to save the party, IU will still have to go. So this is uh, a continuation of that battle. But I'm sure in APC, you know, there will be jubilation and they will say, well, let uh, the people in PDP cancel themselves out. The same spirit of error that I alluded to yesterday. One thing is certain, <clears throat> politicians always do things for their interest. And like I said, for a party that has just lost an election, all right, some will argue, oh, until it goes to court, you have no right to say that. But as we speak today, PDP did not win the election. So for a party that just lost an election, it is going to be harder across board. And that is what is happening to Yocha Ayu as we speak today. All of this <clears throat> started when some members of NEC were suspended from the party. And like uh, Chief Body George was saying yesterday, I think he was quoting one of Newton's laws of motion that says action and reaction are equal or opposite. And that's what happened yesterday. All of a sudden, Iyocha Ayu was kicked out, or temporarily, till he faces his own day in court, by people in his ward. Although there's been discordant news, they said, oh, most of that, uh, 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 that the letter was forged, and people are speaking against it. But what they should also ask is, there was also a group of people that signed that, that letter. They claimed they were kidnapped. There's an infighting going on in his ward now, but as we speak, and most people in the NEC will not support Yorcha Ayu. Why? Because he had just kicked out most of their colleagues out of NEC. And he has sent a serving governor to go for the disciplinary committee of the party. So it's an interesting time for the PDP. But where did all of this come from? You cannot remove this from the zoning arrangement that happened leading up to the emergence of the presidential candidate of the PDP which even led to you having G5 governors in the first place. Because the argument some of them made then was the fact that, hey, after Alaji Atiko ran in 2019, it was only fair for them to zone this to the south. And they had a couple and series of meetings before they finally said, oh, let's open it up. And once Alaji Atiko emerged, the party became rancorous. A lot of people have said, oh, the G5 was not going to have any effect. Some people call them all sorts of names. 
The effect of the G5 in the last election, it's obvious. If the party had been united, could the party have done better? That's an argument out there. Some people will say, no, they didn't have an effect. Some people will say, yes, they had an effect. But whatever has happened to the PDP, it has to be reminded. We have to remind the PDP that and how it's divided against itself will not stand. And we should go back in history and ask, why did Lincoln give that a house divided against itself speech? He was exactly after a party primaries, a rancorous party primaries that led to his emergence as the presidential candidate of the party. And they were split down the middle. And for him to be able to bring his heart together, he said the house divided against itself will not stand. And he gave that famous speech. So will are you get enough backers? Will he get a good time in court? Will things work in his favor? The court will decide that. But historical antecedent shows that this was the same way Adam Sashomala went in the APC then. And we also had ended. Probably the same way Secondos did go. It's a fight for the soul of the PDP. Let's see how this will pan out. But it will be a miracle if Yocha are you get to sit back. Ahead of the May 29th inauguration of the new administration, the Transitional Committee has assured Nigerians of a smooth handover despite ongoing litigation and threats. Chairman of the committee, Boss Mustafa, says that they are working out to ensure that the fourth handover ceremony since the return to democracy goes according to plan. There will be a formal handover on the 29th of May. It's a constitutional matter. And it has to be resolved. All litigations, whether resolved or unresolved, will not in any way stop the formal transfer of power. Now, President Buhari is not spending a day extra after the 29th. He would hand over power to whoever has been declared by INEC. Uh, the court processes will continue. And uh, whatever determination those, uh, the court does, even after the swearing in, it has always been accommodated. This is not the first time we have run elections. This is not the first time people have assumed offices and litigations continue. We are doing everything to ensure that the process of the transition is not truncated. Uh, federal government has issued a statement to that effect. Uh, the parties that are involved have also issued a, uh, statements to that effect. But as far as the Presidential Transition Council is concerned, and that's the essence of our setting up the various committees, the inauguration committee, which has responsibility for the processes of the inauguration, the swearing in, the parades, uh, the activities uh, preceding uh, the formal uh, handover of power. Uh, the Security Facilities and Intelligence Committee has the responsibility to ensure that nothing happens to truncate uh, the process. Dr. Patrick? Well, the key issue made by the uh, Secretary to the Government of the Federation, who is also Chairman of the Transition Committee, is that whatever happens, irrespective of what happens uh, in the tribunal and with regard to litigations affecting the presidential election, on May 29, Ashwa Yubola Ahmed Tinubu will be sworn in as President of Nigeria, and that nothing will stop President Muhammadu Buhari from stepping down on that day as president of Nigeria. Well, what the uh, chairman of the transition committee has done simply is to spell out what the existing constitutional order in Nigeria is. On May 29, the four-year second term tenure of President Buhari expires, so he leaves. The other things spelled out by the chairman of the transition committee is that already the transition has begun. The president-elect has nominated uh, two persons, uh, governor, former, uh, governor of Kebbi State, Abubakar Bagudu, and Mr. Wale Edmund, former commissioner of uh, finance in Lagos, as members of the transition committee. And protocol has already been you know, activated. The protocol, meanwhile, means that the moment you are announced as president-elect of Nigeria, the Nigerian government, the state, qua state, we should make a distinction between government and the state, begins to treat you as if you are already president. The defense house is prepared. You move into the defense house. You get briefings. 
even if you cannot act on the briefings until you are sworn in, uh, they give you the uh, full complement of security. You get to see the blue paper from the uh, intelligence agency, NIA. You get to see the reports, daily reports from the Department of State Security. So already, they treat you as president. But the constitutional order is important. Con the constitution of Nigeria, I think section 285, subsection 6, 7. Now, which was not previously provided for, which was not in the Electoral Act of 2002 and 2006, says that election petitions must, de must be determined within a space of 180 days. So if there's going to be 180 days that the Constitution provides for, then it means that, look, this election petition at the uh, tribunal may in fact go on till after till after December, till next year. So in the meantime, you will have put in a president who will have been sworn in, who will be exercising the full powers of the state. The mischief that uh, the framers of the law tried to cure in the 2002 Electoral Act, the 2006 Electoral Act, was a mischief thrown up in Ngige versus Obi. In Ngige versus Obi, the litigation went on for 34 months. So they tried to address it and then said, oh, 180 days. But election cases are sui generis. They, they are in the nature of their own. They can go all the way to Supreme Court. So they now said 180 days. The question to ask is, would even the 180 days be enough? Your guess is as good as mine. On May 29, uh, Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Tinubu will be sworn in as president of Nigeria. And until the case is determined at the tribunal, at the Supreme Court, he will have been acting as president of Nigeria. What are the issues that that will raise? We will be back to the mischief raised in Ngige versus Obi in uh, Anambra State, or will Nigerians say, well, being that, uh, you know, this presidential election petitions are, in, are, are of a peculiar kind, maybe we should just in fact, say that even the 180 days may not be enough. Those are the issues in this regard. So I do not think that the uh, chairman of the transition committee, I don't think he has said anything uh, that is out of order, because that's what the constitutional order of Nigeria presents us with. So I'll be surprised if there's no transition committee in place as we speak, because when you look at it critically and empirically, nature of a vacuum. Once he's been declared president-elect, everything starts, all the activities start leading up to swearing in. This is not, you know, nullifying the fact that we've got cases in court and which that pans out. So he will be sworn in, and it is while he is president, he'll be also able to deal with the case he's got in court as regards election petition. And by the way, it's his birthday today. He says he's 71 today. Happy birthday to him. He said. I mean, he's 71 today. No, his document say he was born okay. on the 29th yeah. of so March, his, his, 1952. Yeah, so his document says he was born on the 29th of March, 1952. So he's 71 today. Happy birthday to him. But the truth has to be told. What a lot of people are looking at, and I think maybe in further conversations as regards our constitutional election, is the fact that if we can put a caveat that every election matter is settled before swearing in. Is that plausible? I don't know now, currently. But is it being done in other parts of the world? Yes. I mean, because Kenya too always had this problem. Until they put their constitution in place in such a way that almost all electoral cases are taken directly to the Supreme Court and are handled just before swearing in is done. So that's another part of the argument.